Buongiorno, good morning. Hey, if you like ice cream and if you like pizza, you better stay here with me today on Away We Go because we're taking on Italy, the place where all of this was invented. So welcome and stay here in just a few moments. Well, good morning. I'm so happy you are here joining us on another episode of Away We Go. My name is Dan Vasquez, and today we are taking on a country that is basically one of my favorite countries in all Europe, which is the nation of Italy. I've had the privilege of being in Italy uh, more than a couple of times, and it's just an incredible, incredible nation. So um, I, I want to thank you for being with us, and if you have any questions or any uh, things you want to add to our presentation today, please feel free to send us a message on Facebook, on Zoom, or whatever platform that you're joining us. So go ahead and send us those questions even as we're going in. But let's go right now into Google Earth and let's take our journey starting today from Columbus, Ohio, all the way to Rome. Here we are in the capital of Columbus, Ohio, and we're going to get ready to go from our city to the beautiful country of Italy. The nation of Italy became a nation in 1861. The peninsula is now known as Italy. One of the interesting things is that nobody really knows where this name came from. Um, but Italy means the land of cows. <laughs> the land of cows. So we're going to start our journey today. Um, of course from Columbus, Ohio, and we're going to go right from the Western Hemisphere to the nation Europe of Italy. Now, uh, before we get here, uh, we're looking right now at Rome. Let me zoom out. I want to show you uh, a very distinguished place. I think Italy is one of the most recognized countries in the world because of the shape that it has. It's a country that is shaped as a tall boot. So we're looking right here in our Zoom where, where Italy is located. And let me um, show you in, in, in the European map, when you look at our, our map, um, you will see where it's located in, in Italy. Is there, any, is there a delay? I'm showing the PowerPoint. Yeah. So I want to show you um, a, a picture of where Italy is. You're looking right now um, at the peninsula of Italia, how they would say, the people from Italy, uh, they would say Italia, and the language that, is, that they speak is Italian. However, it's not the only language spoken in Italy, the northern part. Right there, we're looking at, at the map uh, of Europe. And of course, Italy is a European nation. In the northern part, uh, you will speak French, German, and uh, Slovenian are the other three languages spoken in uh, Italy, but mostly in the northern parts, as you can see, it's connected. But you can see the, the, I, the peninsula uh, is in the shape of a boot. It's very recognizable. And it's a very, very unique uh, country of Italy. Now, you will see also that there are two islands connected to the, the peninsula. Or they are, they're not connected. But the island of Sardinia and Silici, those are also members of the nation of Italy. This is where the Romans are known for. Um, Italy has a rich, rich history in just a few moments, I'm going to take you on on some of the uh, amazing, amazing pictures of this country. But I want to show you some things to notice on this map you're looking at. Uh, if you notice in the north, we have in the northwest, we have the city of Milan, which is right at the border of Switzerland. We have Verona, Triste, and then on the east, 
part, we have Venice, the famous, beautiful city of Venice, which I have an ama amazing pictures I want to show you from Venice. Um, and then we go right in the a little south, you, you find Florence. Right outside of Florence is where you will find the famous Leaning Tower of Italy. And then you go onto the west coast of the peninsula, and that's where you find uh, the, the country of Rome. Now, um, Rome, of course, there is the famous saying, all the roads lead to Rome, right? <laughs> um, Rome is a very, very famous, very, very famous city, and there is um, a lot of things to talk about Rome. Uh, but the proper name, let me start with the proper name of Italy. The proper name is the Republic or La Repubblica Italiana. La Repubblica Italiana, that's the uh, um, name, official name of Italy, but the nickname is Bel Paese. Bel Paese, which means beautiful country. Bel Paese. Um, and the capital city is Rome, which you see right in the star. And um, Rome was founded founded in 1753, um, and it's where you find inside of Rome the country of the Vatican. So um, I got some pictures I want to show you. Let me start with some pictures from from Rome, and right here you can see uh, some of the images of this beautiful, beautiful city of Rome, and we'll, we'll start our journey here. Uh, but as we go through Rome, uh, for you to prepare, like how do you prepare for a trip to to Italy, of course, you have to have a passport. Nobody can leave the country without a passport anymore. And um, Italy is um, a part of the United Nations. So if you have an American passport, you do not need a visa to enter the country of Italy. You can enter Italy, fly straight from New York City. I know that, well, before the COVID-19, there used to be daily flights from New York into Rome. Um, and the flight is not that terrible. The flight is only six and a half hours, seven hours. And within seven hours from New York City, you can uh, fly into into Rome. The currency of the money um, is the Euro. But before the Euro, it was the Italian Lira. They used to have their own money as any other country. But in 2001, when the Euro European Union began to become more unified, um, they began to use the euro. So now uh, you can use the euro. A few interesting facts about Italy is that uh, you do have to pay for water, especially in Rome. Water is not free. We're used to here in America that when you order something to, to eat and you say, can I just have some water? Uh, they'll bring you some water. But in Italy, you will have to pay for water. and. Um, water is more expensive than wine so um, just to consider that um, water will be charged for it like in another a lot of other places so when you eat it now uh, here's another awesome awesome thing about Italy Italy is one of the most uh, literate nations um, in the world as far as people that are able to read and write 99% of the population of Italy uh, can read and write. So let me go and show you some more pictures uh, from uh, from Rome, and you can see some of the architecture. This is a place. This is a romantic nation, place of great invention. I said it at the beginning of the show, and I'll say it again. If you like uh, Jello, uh, if you like ice cream, if you like pizza, if you like all kinds of the cheese that Parmesan cheese. All of these are uh, creations of Italy. Italy is world known uh, for uh, the architecture, for, of course, the Romans and the infrastructure that they were able to create. Great architectures. Uh, of course, the Roman road that is very, very known that goes all the way from Rome to Jerusalem and from Jerusalem back to Rome and all the way to England. Um, that Roman road, which is hundreds of years old, still continues to exist today because of infrastructure. So let me show you a few a few more pictures. Here we're looking at the amphitheater um, in Rome. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, place that, that you're looking at. So um, let me just give you some more um, things about 
the I Italy. Italy, Italians eat spaghetti only with a fork. They will not use a spoon. They only use a fork. The official language is Italian as well as German, especially in some of the northern region. Mozzarella, the Italian cheese balls, originally made from buffalo milk. That's where the mozzarella came from. They were the creators of ice cream. Uh, the pesto is a thick green sauce with olives, herbs, and olive oil. Another thing, if you like olives, uh, Italy is the place to go see uh, olives. Now, the, the, the city of Rome has a lot of fountains in the city, and you're looking at some of them right now. Uh, like, this is a very, very famous uh, fountain, and you will find little plazas among in, in, in the um, metropolitan area of Rome where you will uh, come across fountains like this. Of course, this is one of the most famous. I want to give you a tip. Uh, do not, do not uh, think twice about jumping into that water and taking uh, a refreshment water from there because you will be fine. I think it's 2,000 euros. Even if you fall by accident, because there's normally a lot of tourists there, if you fall and trip into one of those fountains, you will be charged 2,000 euros. So you do not want to do that. Uh, pizza, that's another invention of Italy. Pizza was um, made in Napoli in, um, in a long time ago. So also uh, the famous calzone, the calzone, which is basically a folded pizza. Um, you can also find it there. Um, pizza is surely one of the most famous exports in Italy. And I don't know if you knew this, but in the United States there was a um, statistic run. What was the number one fast food um, that Americans eat? And most people would say hamburger or hot dog. But actually pizza took the number one spot as far as the fast food that most Americans eat. Think about all the Friday nights and all the pizza that you eat during those times. So Italy used to be a kingdom. It used to be um, a, a nation um, ruled by, by a king, but Italy became a, um, a, a republic um, some years later, and now it's a democratic government. Uh, some of the main Italian dishes uh, contain pork, beef, seafood, and potatoes, rice, pasta, and um, Italy is also known for great inventors like the pioneer who studied electricity uh, was Alexandro Volta. And that's where the name Volt, when you look at electricity and you always see the number of volts, the volts come from Alexandro Volta, uh, from his last name, Volts, from Volta. Also, uh, Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci was a scientist artist who was the first one to prove that the world was not flat. Uh, for all of those Earth Flatters today, you may want to do some uh, research on Leonardo da Vinci. Um, also famous um, uh, people from Italy, you might have heard of Christopher Columbus. Uh, if you know our city, is named after an Italian man. For those of you who didn't know, uh, Christopher Columbus, the man who um, discovered America, uh, is an Italian, uh, uh, along with Emergio Vespucci. Emergio Vespucci was also one of the men that uh, discovered Americans while, while Marco Polo explored the East. Italy is known uh, for um, a lot of things, but one of the things that Italians love, and I found this truth when I was there, Italians love sports. They love, and, and their main sports, of course, are uh, soccer, but they're also huge on cycling, on skiing, and motor racing, uh, car racing. Um, of course, they also create famous cars um, and, and some other things. I'm showing you some pictures right now from the um, uh, from the old part of Rome. Now, I'm going to show you one of my favorite pictures of 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 all uh, of Rome, which is the old Roman Empire, which the Roman Empire um, actually was destroyed by within itself. So let me see if I can show you that picture we're looking at some of the downtown but um, I don't know if it's a little bit delayed right there 
Let me see if I can go back and forth between. So there we are in, in Rome. I'm switching to Google Earth right now. Hey, David, I'm in Google Earth. And I'm going to switch back to uh, in just a moment. So we're looking at, at Rome. Uh, as you can tell, Rome is on the west side of Italy. And uh, we're looking at, uh, at this area of Rome. And we're going to do a 3D view of what the city looks. And you can see the Coliseum right here on your... Uh, on your screen as we're going around you'll see uh, the red dot in the Colosseum the famous Colosseum so I want to show you some pictures of the Colosseum in just a second um, but again once you get into Rome uh, from the airport there is a rail system and you can take the train all the way to the to, to the main part of the city with no problem you just need to make sure you got euros before you um, get to Italy you can get go to your bank and purchase some euros uh, even before you go, you can also use your credit card, but make sure you have an international credit card that does not charge you international fees because those fees can get expensive. You will be charged three dollars for every time you use it, plus a percentage of the amount you spend. So before you know it, you already spent fifteen to eighteen dollars on your purchase of, uh, of whatever you use. There are specific credit cards that you can use that are that are uh, non-international fee. And you can also withdraw money. You can take your debit card and withdraw money. One of the things uh, that, are, that is good about Rome is that you can take a lot of, um, there is a lot of ATM machines. So I'm switching over to, to the PowerPoint to show you uh, one of my favorite pictures of, um, of Rome. Let me see if it's switching. Nope, it's not switching yet. What about there? It's stuck. It's stuck on that picture. Now let's go back to the PowerPoint and see if we'll take the new, the new picture. No, it's not taking it. All right. Anyway, let me give you some more inf information about. Um, about Rome. If you go to Italy, the emergency dial instead of 911 is 118. 118. So remember that. Make some notes. If you go to uh, to to Italy and you need to call the emergency for whatever reason, you want to dial 118. So, um, I, like I said, um, uh, American passport holders do not need a visa to enter the country. And uh, and the driving, uh, you can rent a car, uh, and and you can go into the driving, and um, the driving is on the right side of the the country. The right side of the road uh, is opposite to the England side, and you do need an international driver's license. Now, if you already have a U.S. driver's license. Uh, it's easy to get an international driver's license. You can actually go to AAA or others. Oh, there we are. So right there on the screen, we're looking at a picture of the old Roman Empire. You can see the the the, the constructions, the arch. Now uh, the arch, uh, the Romans uh, claim that they were the inventors of the arch, and uh, that's some of the pictures that that you see. Isn't it just beautiful? Now we're looking at another picture coming up is the Colosseum. Um, we'll, we'll see if I can get you a picture of the Colosseum in just, just a moment. There we are. So um, this is the Roman, the famous Roman Colosseum, which is right in the city of Rome. And, uh, and you can see uh, right here some of that uh, information. Um, let me see if I can show you some other. The, the other name for the Colosseum is the Flavian Amphitheater. Um, now, for uh, you know, a lot, a lot of young people right now, and a lot of the people in the nation are um, uh, because of the things that are going on. Um, they have uh, a lot of strong emotions. I would only recommend that you take some 
uh, time to study the amphitheater in Rome and study what went on in this amphitheater. What happened? I'm not going to get into the details. I'm going to give you that as homework, but really take time as far as what activities took place in this place. Now, this is one of my favorite pictures of the amphitheater. And if David, um, if I can ask you a huge favor, um, I'm, I'm running low on battery and I'm going to be running out pretty soon. So you can get my charger. It's over there in, in my office. It's the same uh, laptop. Yeah. So uh, one more thing. People ask, when is the best time to visit Italy? There is no bad time. Let me just put it this way. There is no bad time to visit Italy. If you want to go in the spring, which is between March and May, uh, the springs comes with a great place. You can visit uh, the, the center part of Italy. You can visit Florence, the Gulf of Naples, the Sorrento Peninsula, or the islands, Celici or Rome. So that's a great time to go visit there. In the summer, which is June through August, um, you can visit all of the islands, all of the southern part. It's a great time to visit. In the fall, which is between September and November, uh, this is a great place to, to visit Verano, Bresanone, in the Dolomis, the Lake Lombardi, uh, Apulia, or the beautiful islands, uh, as well as many spas. Uh, one thing about Italians, Italians love spas as well, and you can do a lot of that. And December. Now, one thing that... Uh, um, that one thing that is unique about Italy is that in Italy you have the north and you have the south and in the north part you can find Alps with snow and um, you can do skiing in the north. Here's an uh, amazing fact about Italy. Italy has the highest mountain in all of Europe which is Mont Blanc, Mont Blanc which is about an hour and a half north of Milan and I had, uh, in one occasion, um, I drove all the way from Venice to Milan to, through, uh, I was on my way to Geneva, Switzerland, and I got to drive a famous highway called Mont Blanc Highway, which takes, takes you right into Mont Blanc Mountain. And I'm telling you, those are some beautiful, beautiful seas. Let me take you on a picture from the inside of the amphitheater. And this is what the amphitheater, uh, just to look. Now, if you've seen the movie, The Gladiator, they uh, took um, ideas from this amphitheater. They recreated it, and um, it, it is uh, said to uh, the, the history will tell you that they actually flooded it with water. So all of that you see, they would bring alligators. <laughs> some people say they even brought sharks in there. I'm not sure about the sharks, but I'm sure they had some animals there. So uh, let me look at some some other pictures from Rome. So right now we're looking uh, at Rome. And you can see some um, some of the different architecture uh, from this part of Italy. This is uh, another little town called Noto, and in Noto you can find all kinds of stuff. Uh, one thing that is good about Italy is that you're not going to feel like you are unable to communicate because most of the young people in Italy uh, learn English, French, or German in school. So they will be able to speak different language. Now, one of the great places, uh, we're looking at a picture from Tuscany. Tuscany, uh, if you like the restaurant Olive Garden, um, they were inspired by the city of Tuscany and they designed all of the restaurants and their dishes and all of that Italian food, uh, which by the way, I haven't been to Olive Garden in a while. It might be a good cho choice for lunch today. I don't know. Um, not all of the Italians speak Italian. Uh, but many Italians speak different dialects. Um, so there are different dialects in there. Italian is a Roman language that is derived from Latin. I remember being there for the second time. And when I was uh, there, um, I was waiting for uh, my boss. Uh, and I was talking to, um, to a nun that just came, sat right next to me, and we started a conversation. We talked for 30 minutes. She spoke fully Italian. I spoke fully Spanish. And we were able to communicate. Uh, well, at least I was able to understand it. I don't know about her. <laughs> um, in Italy, you do have some wild animals. You have sheep, you have bears, um, donkeys. Uh, the brown bears are a pro protected species in Italy. So you cannot go hunt bears over there. Um, 
the the city the the country of Italy is unique because it's the only country that has two nations listen two nations inside the country um, two other small nations are uh, locked land inside the country of Italy one of them is the famous city of the Vatican which the Vatican is um, the Vatican is the city where the Pope lives and I, ha I think I have a picture there to show you this is in the island of Cilici this is the government palace that you're looking at the screen uh, Cilici of course is the island on the western southern part of, of um, Italy uh, very beautiful if you look at the horizon you can see the ocean and you can see the um, the, the image there and these are some of the coast uh, small villages. You can see how beautiful uh, they built and the colorful um, that the Italians um, build. The Italians are very artistic uh, people. Uh, this is in the coast of Italy. Uh, another interesting fact about Italy, Italy has three volcanoes and the most active is the volcano of Etna. Uh, we have a town here in Columbus called Etna. And it's named after a volcano in Italy. And Etna started erupting in uh, 2010, I believe. And from time to time, you will still see activity. So there are three volcanoes. Most people don't think about volcanoes when they think about Italy. In the north part, uh, we have a picture here of Milan. Milan is another amazing city. And this is the Cathedral of Milan. And um, this is uh, worth, worth seeing. So if you go to Milan, this is probably the most visited site in, in Italy. If you like shopping, great stores in Italy. There is great designers all around this the city of Milan. And if you like uh, sports, uh, of course, the soccer team Milan is there and uh, all kinds of good, good restaurants. Uh, in the northern part, of course, Milan is in the northern part. Let me let me show you again where Milan is situated. Let me take you back to the map right here on the PowerPoint, and you will see where Milan is very close to Switzerland in the northern part. Uh, it's like an hour away or less than that. But all of the border of Italy in the north is uh, separated um, with a mountain ridge. Mountain ridge. So these beautiful Alps, uh, which are top with snow you can see all the snow on the top switzerland germany austria slovakia and france and all of that is surrounded by mountains so if you want to uh, get out of italy or enter italy through that northern part you're going to have to go through the mountains but they are uh, excellent uh, constructors of tunnels tunnels so you can drive through uh, the mountains and i remember in mont blanc uh, highway uh, i took the longest tunnel I have ever driven through. I think it took me 45 minutes to drive through that tunnel. So if you're cl uh, claustrophobic, I wouldn't recommend. I would recommend flying because you're going to be uh, underneath a huge mountain for at least 45 minutes. And then you get started getting breaks and you get to see the peak of the mountains as you're driving through and then another tunnel and then beautiful scenery and then another tunnel. It's a fun ride to, to drive. Um, Italy has a, a, a river that runs from east to west in the north part. You can see it right here. And it's called the Po River. And the river goes all the way down uh, southern part of Belize. Now, uh, for those young adventurous people that don't want to pay for hotels and they want to stay there for free, in the city of Triste, in the Slovakia border, there are these amazing um, uh, beaches that you can stay at and it's free, it's public. Um, you can just sleep there in the summer. You don't need, uh, the, the weather is perfect. You need to bring a blanket and a towel. You just lay it right there and you can sleep there. Nobody will bother you. And there is hundreds of people that sleep there through uh, in the summer. So that's, that's another fun thing that you can do. And that's a cheap way to do it. I have some uh, friends from Poland that took that trip and they saved a ton of money uh, by by not by, by doing that now let me go back to um, to Google Earth and I'm gonna take you back from Rome and of course uh, let's look at the amphitheater on our 3d at the Coliseum the Roman Coliseum and we're looking at it right there and we'll took we'll, we'll take a, a view so you can see it right here of course it's being protected and um, 
we're looking at it from above and let's take a 3D view so you get a very view of the Colosseum which again like I said uh, before I would encourage you to take some time and do some research and study um, a lot of people want to um, that are interested or curious about history it's very very interesting all the things that took place um, in this place and you can see how the Italians are, uh, are very careful to take care of the buildings and of the city so we'll take a, a, a view from from right here to to see an actual view of what it looks like in in live person so we're looking right here from the ground in Rome at a virtual view of Rome anyway uh, time is going by so we're gonna go now from from Rome and I want to take you to the to my probably my favorite place is Venice and I'm going to give you a few tips about what to do when you go to Venice. So we're living right here on, on Google Earth from the southern part all the way to Venice. The driving distance from Rome to Venice is a good 9 to 10 hours. Um, you could drive it in a day, but it's, uh, it's a little bit of a drive. So we're looking right now on the north uh, part of Venice. So Venice is on the, on the ocean, but it's a lagoon. And the city was built upon this lagoon and, and these uh, little islands. I don't know if you can see it on the screen right now. Oh, we're getting there. So again, on the northern part, Venice is in the northern part um, in the Adriatic Sea. And it's at the border of Slovenia, Croatia. So I want to take you right into Venice. Because if you um, decide to go there and you rent a car, let me make sure I make this clear, you cannot drive a car into Venice. You cannot drive a car into Venice. Ven there are no cars in Venice. Venice is a lagoon. And the, uh, the, the city was built on on little uh, little islands of this lagoon so there is absolutely no way to get in there you can fly in there uh, but you will have to take either a train there is a train that takes you right in through the right uh, into the main part but as you're looking at, at Google Earth right here you will see that um, that there is a little road that take you but it's not it's not drivable so again uh, if you're planning a trip to Venice uh, you cannot take a car because you're going to have to uh, know where to go. Here's another uh, interesting fact about Italy. Italy is the fourth most populated place in Europe, mostly because of high rates and low death rates. So people live long in, in, in Italy. Um, One, one more thing. Oh, Italy is one of the most visited uh, cities. Oh, let me see the... There you go. Let me go back to uh, Google Earth. See if we can get it. Um, we're looking at in Google Earth at the north. In the north part of Venice. Anyway, one, one thing about Italy. Italy has more than 50 million tourists. 50 million tourists visit Venice each day. There, there you are. Uh, uh, we're looking right now at the northern part. You're looking on your screen. 50 million tur tourists. Can you imagine 50 million people visiting a nation of 61 million people? That's as many people uh, come to visit as the people that, that live there. But um, really, if you decide to go to Italy, there is no... Uh, ugly part to see the whole country that whatever place you choose to go you will see different things I wanted to show you right here on the on the screen that we're looking at that line you see where Venice is Venice is that lagoon 
and then um, the Mar Mar Margera, Margera is the area that is on the left side, and you see that red line that connects. That's a little bridge that was built, and that's the the metro, and the metro will take you from the airport to Venice. But once you get into Venice, you will do have to do a lot of walking. If you do not like walking, um, you might need to take a little rest because you will have to walk a lot, or you can take. Uh, the pergolas, uh, those awesome boats. But if you pay for a per pergola, the cost, when I was there, what, three years ago, the cost was uh, 75 euros, 75 euros for an hour uh, to two hour trip. Where you're looking at 75, that's over $100 for an hour trip on a pergola. So you better save up your money if you want to take the pergola and take your picture on that. It's going to cost a pretty penny. Uh, Soccer is the most popularized organized sport in Italy. And of course, football, it's so huge. People follow uh, football, it's huge. Venice does not have a soccer team because there is no place to put a stadium in Venice. Um, here's another awesome fact about Italy. Musical notations are always in Italian. Alergo, adiago, these are Italian words to indicate uh, tempo and came about because the Italian name Guido di Arezzo came up with a system for modern day musical notation. So when you're looking at the notations, they're always um, in, in Italian. So when you go to uh, Venice, Venice is not the only island you can see. Now this is, I wanna zoom in a little bit more so you can get a picture of the Gran, Grande Canal and you can look at what the island looks like from an aerial view and this is just fantastic venice is to me is a wonder of the world on how they have built through that and the grande canal can take you from the front and you can see how it makes like an inverted s and it goes all the way to to the to the ocean i want to get a little bit more and then we'll do a 3d view of venice if you go to venice please make sure you spend some time in there at least I think three days would be good to get to see uh, and to walk through all all of these uh, little uh, Cajones small venues of the area and the food there is amazing the best pizza I've ever tasted was in one of those holes in the walls um, right here in the city of Venice so um, one more uh, thing about Italy is that the Christmas season is the longest season. <laughs> I think, they, okay, let me put it this way. Italians celebrate Christmas more than anybody else. The Christmas season um, dinner normally starts December 24th on Christmas Eve, and it runs until January 6th, January 6th, until the Epiphany. Um, so they celebrate Christmas for like, not. it's not only one or two days, it's, it's like, for a couple of weeks. Um, pasta wasn't eaten in Italy with tomato sauce until the 1600s in Italy. For those pasta lovers, it was until the 1600s. Um, let me see one more, a few more things about um, Italy that, that you can tell. So let's go back over here. And let me show you some things about uh, Venice. Let me show you some pictures uh, from our... From here, I want to take you to... Um, some of the pictures from Venice. Um, I think I think this is one of my favorite. There we go, um, and you can see this is the Grand Canal, and it's looking at the architecture. There are museums, there are hotels. The average night of a hotel on a on a cheap cheap level, I think it's about one hundred and fifty dollars to two hundred dollars a night. Um, of course, you can stay in really really fancy places but it can easily go to 500 to 700 dollars a night on the high-end hotels in venice but with reason because there is so much to see there is another picture here of venice notable mentions is uh, florence let me show you a picture of florence right here um, there's the city of florence in the center part of italy also lots of culture Lots of things to see, lots of things to test. Some of the best food in the world you'll find here. Like I said, you don't go wrong 
when when you go to Italy. Here is uh, Lake Garda, a picture of Lake Garda uh, on the coast, on the eastern coast, and uh, beautiful, beautiful places. If you like nature, you can see it. If you like swimming in lakes, you can go there. Here's a picture of the Vatican City. Again, the Vatican, it's its own country within the city of Rome. And it's uh, a country um, where the Roman Catholic Church has its, its home quarters. And this is where the pop, pop lives. And the pop is the leader and the president and, and the ultimate authority here in the Vatican City. The Leaning Tower, another honorable mention just outside of Florence. The famous Leaning Tower of Pizza. Here's another picture of it. Uh, you can see how it was, how it's still leaning. So if you want to go uh, help put it back together, you can. Um, some of the architectures um, that you see. And I'll show you some pictures. Some of my uh, personal pictures. This uh, picture you're looking at, not that one, but the next one. It's a picture I took uh, there from Venice. I'm telling you, it was, it was an amazing, amazing time. And I really recommend it. So you see right here. And I love the second picture I took. Actually made it in my wall paper for my computer for a while. Because the dove was flying right at the right moment. So you see that. I took that picture from an iPhone. I think it was an iPhone uh, 7 that I had then. And uh, that's from Venice. That's another picture I took from Venice. Uh, this are from my last trip there and I can't wait to go back and spend some more time and visit more of the southern part. Here's some other pictures from Venice and uh, again uh, all throughout um, Europe you can see Italy was hit hard by COVID-19 right now there's a strong um, travel advisory so it's not very recommended but I can't wait for it to open up but if you can, just go ahead and start planning your trip there. It's not very cheap. Uh, there I am at the uh, plaza. It's an old, old, old picture uh, of me standing right there on, on the Rome Plaza. And again, uh, there is music playing all within the streets. There's uh, vendors. Uh, there is uh, tourist guys. And so much to see and to do so i hope that by you looking at these images it entices your appetite of travel and i hope you uh, take the courage to go and to travel uh, especially to this uh, country of italy the flight is not far it's only six and a half hours from new york um, i think that uh, the code for the roman airport is fco if i'm not uh, mistaken uh, correctly fco and you can go there so anyway this has been uh, an amazing uh, time to review uh, the, the the nation of italy and i hope uh, like i said it entices your appetite to visit and travel uh, this beautiful nation so uh, get your passport ready start saving your money start making your plans and away we go so i want to thank you so much for joining me today i want to thank you for taking the time and watching um, and learning more about this beautiful nation of italy uh, and uh, go eat some ice cream today or some pizza today uh, in the name of, of italy thank you so much i'll see you next week on another episode of away we go your host dan vasquez if you have any questions please submit in there and we can uh, reply directly to you have a great day thank you so much and enjoy your afternoon. Away we go.